So to kind of, kind of pique your, uh, your uh, creativity, I'll give you a few examples of uh, developers that are building second screen apps now, or applications that are, are second screen apps. And um, for example, this one here, this is the Able Remote. Um, the developer of Able Remote, he, he took the Google TV remote control application that we launched open source last year. He added a number of really, uh, really great features. Um, it still actually is a, uh, a universal remote control. It has all universal remote control functionality, like the, the original application. But he added things like uh, he, you can favorite, um, favorite channels and actually quickly change channels using the device. So if you're like me, you have 200 channels, but you really only watch about five. Um, this makes it kind of, uh, kind of brainless to actually get to your, uh, your favorite shows. Um, he has the same functionality with, with applications and websites as well. So if you have a favorite application on the device, if you have a favorite website on the device, you can actually you know, get to it in just a few clicks on your handheld device. And then he also built in some really interesting integration with Google Music. Um, it's a widget on, on your handheld device that can actually control the uh, playback on Google Music. Uh, the Peel Smart Remote app, um, these, they're actually in the sandbox today, so if you haven't had a chance to, uh, to see their application, uh, it's, now's a good time. Um, the Peel Smart Remote app is, is, a, is a TV and movies discovery app with some ties into social ties. Um, so the, the integration, the way that it integrates with Google TV, uh, like Able Remote, they actually give you the ability to control your TV with your handheld device. Um, so if you've actually uh, you know, launched into a VOD service on Google TV, let's say that, like Netflix, um, you actually can get play controls, and you can actually get navigation controls as well. So if you're, you're in the application, you can navigate around, get more information about the show you're watching. You can actually navigate out of the application as well and, and use the device or use the, the Peel app to navigate the Google TV interface. Uh, on the left-hand side, this is actually their, their handheld or their phone application. On the right-hand side is the, the tablet version. Uh, Trivialist is actually a little bit different. So Trivialist is not a remote control application. Um, so on the right-hand side is actually the, the, the TV application. So what they've done is they've, they've built a, a trivia application. Um, they're putting that on Google TV devices, and they're putting those Google TV devices in uh, sports bars. You go into a sports bar. Uh, you can, if you don't already have the Trivialist app, you can see that uh, you, you have the opportunity to download it. You put it on your smartphone, and then you can actually play trivia with other people in the room or other people at the sports bar. Uh, the interesting thing about this application on a technological side is that it's, they're not actually communicating from the handheld device to the Google TV device. Uh, they're actually using the cloud. So any command, or when you make decisions on the phone, it actually sends it up to the cloud. Um, and uh, you know, when, it, when it's time to change the question, actually that's being pushed down to your phone as well. So, so the communication is not direct. And obviously the reason for that is that uh, you know, not all sports bars have open networks. So you can't really rely on uh, phone to device or phone to TV communication directly. And uh, last but not least, uh, Mobile. Uh, Mobile actually was, was at Google I.O. last year with us. Mobile, they're also at Google I.O. with us this year, and I think they're in the uh, Google TV lounge now. Um, so they actually have Android and web-based uh, multi-screen applications and APIs that integrate with Google TV. Uh, they're the applications that, uh, you know, on the right-hand side here, this is the Poker Fun game, which is really cool. Uh, you, you can play poker with, uh, poker with multiple of your friends in your living room, or actually, I think it actually works now with with people in, in other living rooms as well. And uh, you have your personal experience on your handheld device, and the TV actually has a shared experience, which is the poker table. Uh, they have WeDraw and WeTelly as well. Uh, these work with their, their APIs, the Cloud Connect and the Direct Connect um, uh, platforms or, or APIs for, for both cloud-based and direct communication with the Google TV device. And uh, they also have what they call the, the Control TV platform or the controller, uh, which actually puts all the apps into one uh, handheld control. So, uh, so the goal for us today, so now that you kind of hopefully are kind of inspired to, to build second screen apps, um, we're going to teach you what you need to know to start building these applications. And uh, to do that, we're first going to uh, teach you how to share data, so share, basically share any data between a second screen and a first screen device. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about the Anymote protocol and library uh, for sending input events, input events specifically from the second screen to the first screen or to Google TV. And then we're going to show you how to implement a uh, the Chrome extension using any mode for actually controlling Google TV. And that's uh, Dave's specialty. So uh, on to the technical side of things. So uh, like I said, I'm going to t tell you how to uh, share any data between second screen and first screen, our Google TV devices. And to do that, I'm going to do a quick demo to kind of show you what I mean. Uh, this demo, what we did is we put together a few demos for um, using uh, sensor information. So 
the, the handheld device actually becomes a uh, kind of a sensor proxy for the TV. So what we'll do is we're going to bring up the sensor application on the TV. Um, these, are, these are just demos. I mean, they're, they're very simple uh, applications, but uh, hopefully it'll kind of give you an idea of what's possible when you can just basically pass any data between the two devices. And, oops, so that will launch that. So. so this is called the remote sensor data. So we basically, we took the, uh, some of the sensor demos that we had for, uh, for Android. Um, we, we ported them to Google TV. Um, this is actually the colored cube example um, that you can get for your Android devices. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pair my handheld device uh, with the Google TV. Um, this, this pairing, oh, it's a little bit dark, but I hope you can see it. Um, so the, the pairing process can be automatic. Um, there, there's technologies that can make it automatic, but uh, I'm going to see if I'm paired already. Nope. So find Google TV. So what I'm going to do is, uh, since, since we don't have auto pairing on this network, I'm actually just going to enter the IP address real quick. And uh, this is kind of a one-time process, because next time I uh, try to connect, it should automatically be there. Um, and we conveniently put the IP address on the display so that you can uh, quickly launch this. So, and 130. Okay, so now I'm going to, uh, on the phone, I'm going to launch the, uh, the Colored Cubes interface. So you probably recognize this from, uh, from Android phones as one of the Android samples. And what we're doing now is basically the handheld device has become a proxy. So, so any of the sensor commands on the handheld device are just sent directly across to the television. So if I pick this up, you won't be able to see it anymore. But as I rotate the phone around, it actually rotates the cube. And the first time I actually ran this demo, I was a little bit confused because as I, as I rotate the phone, let's say to the left, actually the cube rotates to the right. It doesn't seem, seems like the perspective is a little bit backwards. But what, what it's actually doing is on the phone, uh, since you're looking through the, into the screen, uh, you're actually, when you rotate the handheld device, you're actually kind of rotating your perspective of the, of the cube. Um, and we, we actually maintain that type of perspective. But you'd actually think when I rotate the phone down, you might want to rotate the cube down. Just a copy if you, if you try to do this yourself. Uh, I'll give one more quick demo, and uh, then we'll move on. Oops. And we, we also took the, uh, the sensor, sensor graph demo. So th this is also the, uh, uh, one of the Android examples. Uh, we, we also ported it to TV. And this is kind of to show that uh, we're, we're taking pretty much all the main sensors. I think we're taking a accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the, uh, the orientation sensors. And we're just actually passing all that information to the TV and rendering it here. Um, so you see if I take, pick up the phone, if I start to rotate it, uh, move it around. So, so all that information is being sent back um, pretty much real time. We, we haven't necessarily benchmarked it because a lot of it depends really on kind of the, the nature of the network. Um, but, but you can kind of, you know, with the technology we're using, I mean, it's, it's really low-level UDP communication. Um, you can pretty much guarantee it's full-time or real-time communication. So, and actually, as the phone goes to sleep, the, uh, the, it uh, actually sends the disconnect command. So that's why we just saw it go away there. 